All right, hello, everybody. Tonight is Wednesday night, and of course, my name is Calvin Butler, the Logistics Learning Center at the National Dispatch Network. And tonight is Wednesday night, 8 p.m., so it's Q&A. It's all Q&A. There won't be any training tonight, just Q&A. You all ask questions, I try to answer them. We try to find the answers. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We got about 45 minutes to an hour. So let's go ahead and jump right in, our Q&A. And let me go ahead and start sharing my screens. Share everything. Now you all should be able to see our screen, right? And we are live on several areas. We're live on Facebook, uh, my homepage. We're live on the RB Method Distance Learning Center. And we are live on freight broker trainers and instructors. So we want to welcome you all to our live screen of our Wednesday night Q&A. So let's jump right in. Who wants to start with the first question? I guess I could start. OK. So I did have a question about where do I find the owner operators on the platform? All right. Uh, you mean on the platform or owner operators, period? Period. All right. Finding owner operators. All right. Here we go. Now, that was actually the subject of one of our our first how to. Y'all remember what? Y'all remember that? I could not get on uh, earlier yesterday. Okay. <clears throat> I'm actually new. All right. Well, okay. Well, great. Let's go ahead and get started. Good question, though. But that is, um, we have that right. With, it's, it's part of our how-to training. It's actually the first how-to training segment. And I'm going to show you that also, too. But first, I'm going to show you how to find it in your back office. All right. For those of you who are part of our platform, you can go to mydispatcher.org, sign into your back office, and go over to your back office um, tools and resources. If you're going to be looking for your own operators, you're going to scroll down. Okay. Now you notice here everything is set up in Rolodex now. Okay. Um, on the kind of slow. There we go. We have your tools and resources here. We have your agreement forms and documents, and then down here we have your low boards. Okay. Now, in looking for owner operators, it's actually down here in the low boards. There are two ways you can look for owner operators, period. Okay. One way is you can go right. somebody has a lot of noise on the back um, trying to count me. I don't know who that is. All right. Who has their mic open and they're playing music in the back now? Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's remember. This is live. So if you have your music and stuff going on, please mute your mics, okay? Or just turn it down, turn it off, because it picks up, okay? Um, that's very disruptive. All right, back to what I was saying. All right, there are two ways you can find um, the owner operators. You can look for them on low boards that offer a um, carrier locator or a truck locator, okay? Um, one of the ones that offer the truck locators for us is going to be Trucker's Path, okay? You can go to Trucker's Path. I'm going to show you how to do it on there. On Trucker's Path, and let's go to it. And I'm going to show you how to find them on Trucker's Path. When you go to Trucker's Path, it's going to get loaded up here on Trucker's Path. I think my password and stuff is still in there. I don't know how to go back in. Back in the open. All right, let's see. All right, now on Trucker's Path, you notice something here. You're going to have over here where you see where it says truckloads. You have two ways to get, um, you can search on Trucker's Path. You can go in as a truckloads for brokers or truckloads for carriers. Now, of course, if you're looking for truckloads for carriers, you're looking for loads. Okay, if you're looking for the the owner operators themselves or the carriers, you're gonna click where it says truck loads for brokers. Okay, we have um, an account. Our account is both 
with brokers and carriers. So you can you can you can access either one. All right. So you gotta sign in. Shoot, should remember my sign in. Here it is. My sign in is already. I remember. Now once you get here, remember we don't post those because we are not brokers. Now back in the day when we were brokers, we used to post loads. Okay. Uh, yeah. We don't we don't do that anymore because we are not brokers anymore. Okay. Now I can click here and show you our expired loads and show you what our loads used to look like when we were posting loads. We used to post um, quite a bit of loads, as you all can see here. These are all expired now. Okay. Um, so okay. We, but we don't post loads anymore. All right. So what you're gonna do is when you get to this area right here, you're gonna go over where it says truck search. Okay, you're gonna click truck search. When you do that, it is going to pull up all the trucks in all states unless you pick a category. If you pick a state like Alabama, whatever the case may be, but but but, but we're in all states. So we're gonna pull up the trucks that are that are in all states right now. Now, the trucks that you all are seeing here. These individuals here, and over here on the map, it shows you where they are on the map, okay? The trucks that you all are seeing, these individuals went on here and they marked themselves available. These are carriers that have marked themselves available for a load, which means they're sitting somewhere at a truck stop, wherever they're at, and they are empty, okay? And they want loads. That's pretty neat, right? Pretty convenient. Yeah. Exactly. But th these carriers, all you got to do is click on one of them and open it up, and it tells you all about that carrier. It gives you their, you know, their ratings. And what you're looking for is all green, right? Because you want to know if the authority is good, the operations is good, the safety record is good, the insurance is good, and the other is good. And it has all the information here who they are, the email address, the phone number, MC number. Um, name, what type of truck it is, and how long ago did he post himself available? This guy posted himself available one minute ago, okay? The route that he searched, that he was looking for, he tells you right here. What routes that he has searched for are pretty much where he wants to go right now. Right now, he's in Warren, Michigan, right? So he's looking to go either to Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, or Ohio. He even shows you his history of where he's been before. You see that? So it gives you a good mm -hmm. indication of what this guy is trying to do and where he's trying to go and with the routes he likes to run. Pretty neat, right? Yes. All right. Also, you want to make sure that when you look here on your safety rating, you want to make sure you click where it says satisfactory or and conditional. Never look for unsatisfactory because when you, when it's unsatisfactory, I'm gonna show you what it on what it looks like. When you're looking up, when you're looking at the unsatisfactory ones, theirs is going to be in red. And it's going to tell you why they're unsatisfactory. So you hit a second for time to refresh. All right. So if you're looking for the unsatisfactories, let's see who we got in here. Anybody in here that's unsatisfactory? There we go. Here's one that's unsatisfactory. I don't want to miss it. Yeah. Everything's wrong with this guy. His authority. Wow. <laughs> his authority is messed up. His operation is messed up. His state is messed up. His insurance is messed up. And others, there's no wonder he's up. <laughs> he posted himself 13 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, I think he's going to stay up for a while. Now, somebody probably, somebody probably called him because they don't have the tools that we have and they won't be able to look at his information. You know what I'm saying? And they'll just load him up and run. Okay. But you yeah. all have the tools to make sure that you all don't run bad carriers, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Now, that is one way. Let me go ahead and change my, my settings by oh, we don't want no unsatisfactory <laughs> carriers in there. No, no. All right. <laughs> all right. So that's how you find them on the low board. Okay. That's how you find them on the low board. Another way you can find, um, uh, Another way you, you can find um, owner operators, okay? And there are several load boards that have that feature. Um, 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 Direct Freight has that feature. So if you go to the load boards, 
look for the uh, search for Trump, the, the Trump locator, and you'll be able to find it. Okay. Um, another. Hold up here. There's another way that you can look for it. All right. All right. Another way you can look for them is going to one moment here. Pull it up for you. And this is also in your back office student resource that is down in your load board area. I'm gonna go down to, to your load board area, and you're gonna look for this company that I'm about to pull up. Just a second here. You're gonna look for quick transport solution. What we're looking for. Give me this one right here. There it is right here. The trucks will let them move real fast. Okay. Now, now do I do know if you just put the cursor over it and just let it hover, it will tell you what that is. Okay. All right. So you're looking for quick transport um, solutions. All right, now this is the one that you can pull up every owner operator register in every state. Um, and kind of narrow things down and define your search. So I'm going to click transport some solutions. Well, don't give it time to pull up here to the big site. Pull up. Give it a minute, it will pull up. But in uh, this area here, you're going to be able to pull up every owner operator that's registered in every state. All right. Once you get the trick, once you get the quick transport solution, you're going to go over here with his resources. Okay, when you get the resources, you're gonna click on resources. When you click on resources, it's gonna take you to an area and you're gonna have a red strip over here to your left. If I'm not mistaken. It's there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I see the red strip. Yeah, I don't see it on mine. It's running kind of slow over here. Mine's is running really, really, really slow, y'all. I don't know why mine's is so slow today. All right, there it is right there. All right, there it is right there. All right, you're gonna find the red strip and then you're gonna go down and you're gonna look for um, search trucking companies, okay? You're gonna click that right there. Search trucking companies. You can also search for lows on here and things like that too, in case y'all didn't know that. You can um you know you can do a whole lot of stuff on quick transport. Um we primarily use it to search the carriers. Um I don't know why mine is working so slow right now. Everything is responding like super, super slow. I don't know why. It happens. It was working fine just a second ago. Everything wants to just slow down, slow down and like cross. All right, here we go. All right, so now you're on quick transport solutions. All right, you're gonna go in here. You're gonna put in what state you're looking. All right, you can, you can click on it. Uh, when, when this is operated correctly, it happens pretty fast. There we go. And you just pick a state. Not ten more states. Taking you off find carriers in Illinois. Illinois. I'm gonna go way down here to the Illinois. Come on, y'all, Connecticut. <laughs> Illinois. All right. Now, once you put in Illinois, you don't need to put in a city. You don't need that blank. You don't need to put in a company name because you're not looking for them by company. You're looking for them by the number of trucks that they own. We recommend you stick with the companies that have one to five trucks. And the reason why we do that is because when you start getting into the companies that own more trucks. 
that lessens your likelihood of convincing them to sign you on as um, to use your service. Okay, because usually if someone has a lot of crooks, that means they already have what? Dispatchers. Not only that, they have loads. They have shippers already, right? Yeah. Exactly. So you're not going to have you know, a company that owns 20, 50 trucks, mm -hmm. you know, or more, and they don't have loads or shippers to service those trucks, right? Right, makes sense. So, the, so your chances of finding carriers who are going to be more up to using your services is going to be the one that are going to be the smaller ones, one to five. Okay, uh, you don't need to put anything on track for just looking at trucks. And in in operations, you want to go with what interstate, right? Yes. If I know why you want to go with interstate, it's nationwide. Nationwide, exactly. You don't want to mess with guys that just want to stick in one area, <laughs> right? You want to want to find some you want to find some go getters. So you do that, and then you click search. And in the state of Illinois, for carriers that have one to five um, trucks in interstate. We have 17,963 results. Wow. Yeah, wow. A lot of trucks. <laughs> a lot of auto operators, right? So look, there is no shortage of, of finding carriers, <laughs> okay? Of finding guys, trucks, or, or carriers to call and pitch, all right? You can, you can stick mm -hmm. right here with the state of, of Illinois and never get through the entire list. Okay. And that's about the norm. Um, some of the states like um where is it? Alabama we have we have even more. You see what I'm saying? Louisiana might have a little bit less. Texas is gonna have a lot of so it, you're always gonna find a good number of owner operators registered in each state. Okay. And all you gotta do is click on one of these bad boys, um, circle S trucking. Um, but if you click on one of these bad boys you right to it and it tells you all about that company um you, you pull up all the information uh that you want to know about that company and it's going to give you all the information and the numbers you can call the whole nine yards call them up and be able to hit them with the pitch you'll be able to see their um their safety ratings you'll be able to see their inspection reports um everything you need the total number of trucks uh this guy owns is a one truck operation one truck right one driver, there's the MC number, you know, 09 yards. There's there's both his number and his fax number, where he's at, you know, as far as where he operates out of, um, kind of tells you, you know, what type of cargo and stuff. And going down here, you got you got his uh, safety measurements and, and system data, all the safety stuff, number of vehicle inspections, number of this, number of that, and last 24 months. Um, so you got all the information you need, you know, the trucking insurance history, when this insurance expired, when it was renewed, the amount of insurance he has. So you got everything you need. Exactly. You got everything you need to do what? Make a decision about if you want to, you know, seek this guy out and try to get him signed up for a dispatch review. Right? Correct. All right. So hopefully I was able to answer your question. Did I ask you questions? Or yes. All yes, right. you did. Thank you. All right, great. Next question. Next question. Who else has a question? How long does it take for the invoice to process before it gets to your bank account? Um, that depends on how long you mean before it hits your bank account? You mean Correct. After the carry has paid you? Exactly. Oh, you can you can, you can transfer that immediately. You know, if you use a square, it's instantaneous. Okay, if, if you are using Square, okay, yeah. let's go to our Square account here. So y'all, how that works? I hope they loaded up. Everything working so slow tonight. I don't know what's going We cancel out some of this other stuff. Hopefully, we can get this thing going here. All right, if you're using Square and we actually, 
if you go to the video library and look up the um, square invoicing video, uh, we talk about that. Okay, so give me some of this stuff here. Right, I just did a practice one or fake one to my fiance for a dollar, like you showed us the other day on your video. And like, I, I just don't see the dollar in my account yet. So I was wondering how long what? it took to get uh, exactly. Hold up now. Hold, hold up now. Hold up now. You have, to, you have to do your settings too. You got to go to your square settings. You got to get set up for what? Instant? Instant. Sure. Pay. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta set your square up, but instant transfer. If you don't have it set up for instant transfer, it's gonna take. It's not gonna transfer until the end, of, until the end of the day. Normally, and in some cases, if you if you have it set up for like where it, where it does transfer just once a week, you understand what I'm saying? Correct. So let's go here and go to our dashboard. Show you all what we're talking about. Well, mine is set up for. I mean, as soon as the payment comes in, I can go in and click transfer, and it whoop, goes right in, hits the bank account right away. All right. So you got to go to your settings. You got to set it up for the instant transfer. Like there's the last transfer I made. You know, someone signed up today, and I made the transfer. You know, right away. So let's go here to your settings. Now, uh, once you get to your settings, right, um, you got your bank accounts and all that type of stuff. Um, let's see here. Processing business, uh, transfers, transfers, and you want to set up for it. You want to get it set for it. See how I have mine set? But instant transfer, minimum, and I have a minimum transfer amount set for $25. Yes. You know what I'm so once you okay. set that up for instant transfer and you put in the Visa card or your um, your bank card or where you want to transfer it to, you have to transfer it to a certain bank card or you can put in multiple bank cards and kind of split it up how you want to do it. Here it is. You have the schedule. With an automatic transfer schedule will transfer your money to your link bank account based on the speed and the schedule you select below. And see, I have selected what? Same day. Same day. One <laughs> percent. It costs me one percent to do same day. Or you can do what? One to two business days. Okay. That's no charge. Or you can do custom. Choose the speed of each day's transport. Um, uh, transfer it independently. On Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Friday, I want them done at the end of the day. On Saturdays. Saturday and Sunday, I want them done immediately. How do you want to do it? Okay? Got you. But see, I, I have all buys set that up for, there you go, same day. And they charge me 1% of the transaction to do a same day transfer and then do the instant transfer. Okay? Got you. All right. All right. Is everybody clear on that question? It was answered efficiently. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Next question. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> what if you're um, operating as a broker agent and uh, the funds go through the brokerage that you're you're an agent for? Okay. Um, how exactly do, does that work? As far as what you gotta, I mean, you're at the mercy of what of whoever you're working for. <laughs> I mean, if you're working for someone else, right? You gotta, I mean, you gotta fall in line with how he, how they want to pay you and whatnot. Now, if 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 your broker who you are working for is part of our network and they have a corporate and they have a corporate enrollment, okay? And let's say they're using Square, right? Is that what you're asking? Uh, no, no. Okay, well, then, if you're working for an outside broker who's not part of our uh, platform, okay, and, and they're not part of our corporate enrollment, and they're using their own invoice, whatever that, you, I mean, you just, you, you, you're just gonna have to fall in line with how they want to pay you. They want to pay you at the end of the week. They want to pay you every day. They pay you every day. 
That's what I'm doing. Um, I, I have a question about the uh, the fee, the broker's fee. Um, is before the tr before the trucker is paid. Um, is is that something I have to work out with the shipper or? If you are a broker and you you will get paid from the margin because remember what the statute says, okay? Um, uh, the statute is CFR uh, three seventy one. Um, you know, only a bonded and insured broker can take ownership of freight, okay, and dispense it um, out to a carrier for a margin fee. So here's what happens: if you are a broker, this is how you get paid. <clears throat> you go. And you find yourself a shipper and you contact the shipper and you say, hey, Mr. Shipper, how you doing? I'm a broker and I'd like to upload some of your loads. How have you approached them the way I approached them when I was a broker? The way we recommend to brokers who take our platform, you recommend that when you call up a shipper, the first thing you want to talk about is not, you know, like most of them do, how many loads you know, you know, do you have? What type of margin can you give me? Uh, how many loads do you have that's paying good pay? You don't want to talk about the good pay and freight first. The first thing you want to talk to a shipper about <clears throat> is how you can help them move their low pay and freight. How you can help them move the freight that nobody wants. That's, that should be the very first thing you're talking about. So when you start your negotiations with the shipper, first first thing out of your mouth is, hey, Mr. Shipper, how you doing? My name is Calvin Butler. I'm with RBBS Transport. I'm LLC. Let me ask you a question. How much freight do you have that's paying less than a dollar twenty-five per month? Now you what? You pique that shipper's interest, right? Mm -hmm. Now they're ready to listen to you, right? But you're talking what they want to hear. Oh, he wants to know about my low-paying freight that I can't move, <laughs> right? Okay. And they say, well, we've got, you know. Uh, probably about you know uh, twenty percent or forty percent of our freight that we have right now on hand uh, pays less than dollar twenty five per mile, and that accounts for about let's say twenty thousand loads, fifty thousand loads on any weekly basis. Okay, then you may say to them, say, okay, considering that, how would you feel? If I can help you to move 25% of that. Now you offer them to move a lot of low paying freight, right? 25% of 50,000 loads, that's, that's, that's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Now the question y'all probably ask is, how the hell are you going to move 20% of 50,000 loads of <laughs> less than 25, right? Right. Exactly. So you know, so your next thing is gonna be, okay, so if we're gonna help you move that kind of freight, my next question is, how much freight do you have on a daily and weekly basis that you have that you can pay more than $10 per mile? See what I did? I went from the very low to the very high, right? And they may come back and say, okay, well, uh, with our, um, you know, high volume freight or our, or, or, or our high paying freight, we have um, about 25% of our total freight um, uh, competition that pays more than $10 uh, per mile, which totals to about, oh, let's say 10,000 loads. All right, great. Well, with that being said, we could probably help you move about 80% of that. Because anybody can move high dollar freight, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Then your next question is how much freight do you need? How much freight do you have that um, you can afford to pay in $3 per mile and $6 per mile? That's that medium range freight, right? Okay. Right. And then the ship is going to run away. Here, here, here's what I want. Here's what I want to know, Mr. Butler. How do you plan on moving some of that low dollar freight? Well, uh, very easy. We're gonna lose money on it. So if you're paying a dollar twenty-five or a dollar, we're gonna be offering 
a dollar seventy-five or two dollars or two twenty-five, whatever it takes to move that freight, which means we're gonna be losing somewhere in the range of anywhere from fifty cent to maybe a dollar twenty-five cents on that on those loads. Now we're gonna lose money, we have to make money, right? Right. That's why we need a good uh, um a percentage of your what high dollar freight so that we can make up that difference. The money that we lose, we're gonna make up on the higher dollar freight. Because on that freight, we're gonna be offering freight that low just paying eleven, twelve dollars per mile. We're gonna be offering seven dollars per mile or six dollars per mile or eight dollars per mile. I'll see how this I'll see how this is working out. Yes. And then on your medium yeah. range, and then on your medium range freight, we're gonna be offering probably uh that's gonna go about the norm where we take about twenty three and a third percent or or thirty percent, and then we pay the carrier the seventy percent of it. So if it's a three, four, five, or six dollar uh, um, per mile load, we're gonna probably line up on the three dollar per mile. We're probably gonna line up in what two dollars and twenty five cents, right? On the four dollar per mile, we're probably gonna wind up paying close to three dollars. Gonna make a dollar on. On the five dollar per mile, we're gonna wind up paying probably four dollars or four, you know, or, or something like that. Three seventy five to four dollars six. Same thing. We're gonna pay about five dollars per mile. So we're gonna, we're gonna have it down on a dollar um, um, per mile made on the medium range freight. On the high dollar freight, we're gonna average. We're gonna we're not gonna take a big, but we're gonna average somewhere, uh, you know, around four to five dollars per mile on the what the ten dollars plus freight. You know what I'm saying? And then on the lower end freight, we're gonna lose money, which is all gonna balance out. Why? Because we got access to so much what? High dollar freight and medium range freight. Y'all see how that works? Yes. Okay. Y'all don't think I do anything about that kind of stuff, bitch. <laughs> I'm surprised y'all sometimes on it. Look, <clears throat> I've been doing this for a minute. Not a long minute, but the minutes that I have been doing it, I paid attention. <laughs> yeah, I pick up things real fast. And I learned real quick on how to how to gain the attention of people that I want to do business with. Okay. And if you want to gain the attention of anybody in this industry that you're trying to do business with, show them how you can help them move the stuff that nobody wants to um to move. Okay. Let that be the let that be the the elephant in the room. Let that be the first thing you tackle. So be, so Stop being like all these other freight brokers. If you are a freight broker and you go to the shipper, you just want to know uh, how much high dollar freight you got. The shipper gonna look at the okay. Well, uh, let me put you on hold for a second. <laughs> they gonna leave you there. And they gonna come back and say, well, at this time we don't. Uh, <clears throat> no, we have all the brokers um, that we need, and um, we'll give you a call. Don't call us. We'll call you. You know, something like that. They're gonna give you, a, you know, the same old line. Um, how long you been in business? Well, we've been in business well. We have been in business for two years. It was called that, or something like that. They're gonna give you that, you know, just whatever line that they're gonna give you. But if you start off with, how can I help you move your your, your low dollar freight? Now they gonna want to talk to you, right? Well, every ship has got freight that they can't move, that low dollar stuff. Every last one of them. And anybody that starts off the conversation with, I can help you move your Freight that has that's paying less than a dollar twenty-five. Oh, trust me, they're gonna want to listen to. You. Okay, all right. Uh, now, as far as being paid on that stuff, that's how you make your margin. You're, you know, you're paid from your margin if you are a broker. If you are a broker agent, you're looking at that margin, and then it's up to your broker on what cut you're gonna get. If it's gonna be uh, pay you a fifty-fifty, a seventy-thirty or 80 20 or 60 40 or whatever the case may be okay Did I answer that question for you okay. we'll ask that question now <laughs> that brings us to another Got point well, yes, hold up that brings that brings us to another point okay um, my internet connection is unstable. I kind of knew it was kind of slow. All right. <laughs> when we were brokers, we didn't quite get that way. Okay. We set our um 
our team up on residual pay. In other words, instead of having just a freight broker agent who did all the work, we had three separate positions. Okay. And you can go to YouTube and find that. Hold on, let's go to YouTube real quick. Go to our YouTube channel. It's in the back office too. Hold on. Go to YouTube real quick. Um Uh, it's in a video called, um, I think, so you want to be a freight broker or the freight broker. Yeah, here, I find it uh, for you all. And I recommend that if you are brokers, watch this video <laughs> and watch our early, watch our very, very, very early, uh, very, very early on videos. Because if you watch those and see how we were set up, It'll give you a unique perspective on how to structure your brokerage firm. Okay, uh, but let's go and let's go to videos, and then let's go to the ones with the. Um, let's go to the oldest first. Okay, the oldest first. And if you look at how we were set up back in the day. Okay, let's go to some, one of our first training videos. Uh, our first real training video, Dan. I'll get one here. These are most uh, career opportunities. Here we go. All right, all right. You all see this right here? This is one right here called the career opportunity, and then we have one right here it wants to be a freight book. Now, the, this one is a is it is a five minute video that shows you how we were structured. Okay. This one shows you how we were structured. Okay, we have two of them. We have both of them right here. All right, so let's click this one here real quick. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, who wants to be a freight broker? I don't know if y'all can hear this or not. Let me know if y'all can hear this now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me get this volume going on right because I can get this volume. My volume. There it is. Let me volume up so y'all can hear it. I don't know. It. Come on. Volume controls. It is running so slow tonight. I don't know what's going on. I'm probably going to have to shut it down and <clears throat> at some point tonight and restart it. Oh, oh, come on, really? <laughs> Give it any. Uh, all right. Let's do the volume. Pump the volume up. All right. Let me know if y'all can hear this. Hey, can y'all hear this? No, I can't hear anything. Okay. Y'all are probably not going to be able to hear it. All right. Um, y'all can see it, uh, but you can't hear it, right? All right. Here's what I want y'all to at some point in time, go and watch this video. Let me give y'all the link here. Let me give y'all the link. And at some point in time, go and watch this video. But this video uh, really explains to you how we were set up. Um, I'm going to give y'all a, a quick run through of it. I'm trying to share the. Um, okay. All right. Let me share this with you all for a second here. Are you all still there or did I lose you all? I'm still here. Chris is still all right. here. All right. Let me share this with you all here. Um, where is my chat? Let's chat. All right. Alright, y'all see that? I just shared it with you all. It's in your chat area. Hopefully, y'all got it. Okay. Yeah. Alright, alright. Now, what this video does is it basically goes through and it tells you about how we how we change 
the uh, the structure of how freight brokers firms were set up. Okay, um, we got rid of a bunch of paperwork and all the other stuff. Um, so it it goes through and it really explains what the whole system looks like. All right, and then after the first part of it, then we go into the actual makeup of it. Now let me pause that right there. Y'all see that? Y'all see this right here? Y'all see this, right? Yes. yes. All right. Our firm was set up completely different. Okay. This is was the firm. This was us. Previous transport. Okay. We took care of all the paperwork, the onboarding, the payroll, all the process. Okay. Now we had different positions for. Uh, we we broke this up. We had logistics sales executives. Right, and we had certified freight agents. So we split the duties up into three parts. We handled the processing, the paperwork, the payroll, the onboarding, all that type of stuff. All right, as far as you know, with the carriers, we did the carrier onboarding, all that type of stuff. We handled all that. Okay, and out here, the the the, the, the logistics sales executive, all right, they took care of what? What? Y'all see that? Customer freight acquisitions. They took care of acquiring what? The freight. Negotiations, right? They, they, they negotiate lane routes and that type of stuff, right? Two to four dollars. Uh, per mile. So they will call up the shippers, and these people were responsible for what? Getting the freight, getting us signed on with the shippers. Right? Right. Yes. Now, normally, you have one person that does all this. They call up the shippers, then they call them and get the carriers, and try to get the load book, right? Mm -hmm. Then you pay them what? You know, Six percent of the low fee, or six percent of the, or whatever it was. You know, I mean, you split whatever the margin is on with it. That's not how we did it. We paid residuals to our what logistics sale executives. We paid seven and a quarter percent residual. Why? Because we were retaining about thirty percent. We were getting about thirty percent, okay, of the um, load. Y'all see what's going on? We were getting about 30% of the load. And we was paying the carriers about 70%. It was actually the carriers were getting 23 and a third percent. I mean, 73 and a third percent, and we were getting about 27%, 27.9, 27.8, somewhere around there. Okay. So this is how it worked out. All right. These people would, would take care of acquiring the the freight. Okay, let's say that let's say you were a uh, freight a, a logistics sales executive and you went to a shipper and you negotiated with a shipper and that shipper uh, you signed on was supplying us with 10,000 loads per week. Right now, when you signed on that shipper, that was your account. That shipper was your account. All you had to do was sign that ship on and keep make sure you call that shipper back. To make sure everything is going good and that we keep that account. Make sure that sh shipper keeps sending us what? Those loads, right? Mm -hmm. Keep emailing us their loads every day, every week. We, you know, we get our 10,000 loads, right? <laughs> all right. That's all they was doing. And for every load they got booked that they are from their account, guess what they got? Seven and a quarter percent residual. You see what I'm saying? So out of our 23, let's just round it off to 30%, right? So if the mm -hmm. average loads that they got was paying, let's say $4 per mile, well, let's make it easy. Let's say $5 per mile, right? What's seven and a quarter percent of $5? 
Y'all see where I'm going with this? I'm going to show y'all something. The power of residual is very powerful. And no other brokerage firm was doing this. I don't think any other brokerage firm do this even now. We were, when I say we were totally, we totally changed the game, we completely changed the game. That's why we were able to bring on so many agents, as you would call them, um, faster than anyone else. Okay, because we were thinking outside the box. We were being very, very innovative. So if you got a five dollar um, per mile load, okay, times seven point two five uh, uh, percent, right? Hold on, yeah. That's right, thirty-five cent on load. Yeah, that's like thirty-five cents a load, right? Now, that's ten thousand loads. Right? And remember, you're not booking freight. All you're doing is you're just getting the what you call it. 35 cents per mile, not per load. You're getting 35 cents per mile, right? Okay. That's $5 per mile. So you get on average about 35 cents per mile, right? If the average load runs what? About, let's say 800 miles. Let's say the average load was running 800 miles, right? All right, let's say 0.35 times 800. So you're looking at about $280 per low ran, right? Is what your cut was, right? Right. right. Now, right. if you signed on a shipper that gave us 10,000 loads, let's say only 3% of the loads got ran. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. Y'all follow me? Right. So, I'm following if, you. <laughs> exactly. So if your sh shipper has, if your account has 10,000 loads in it, right? Because remember, that's your account, right? Let's say you only 3%, that's 300 loads, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So 300 loads times what? $280, right? Right? Yes, got it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, that's a lot. Hey, look, now y'all see why we were so popular. Because so you was only doing a small um, amount of work, and you're taking a small um, percentage, but that's residual. It's residual. This is why when you go to um, Google and you Google RBBS transport, let me show y'all something here. This is why when you go to Google and you Google RBBS transport, hold on here, let me move this out of the way. And you Google RBBS transport, right? When y'all go to Google and you Google RBBS transport, LLC, so that was our broken firm. And you look for reviews of RBBS Transport. Let me show y'all something here. And you look for the reviews of RBBS Transport. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for not something that we put up, but I want to look for stuff that um let's put let's look for indeed reviews oh. our best transport reviews here it is working at our at our bbs transport this is back when we were brokers okay <clears throat> matter of fact we got a rating of what 4.2 out of five now you see right here now, when y'all see here where it says salaries, check this out. They interviewed 104 of our employees. Okay? And from those interviews, this is what they determined. Our account executive, these were the three positions um, that we offered. We, offer, we, we, we had an account executive, freight brokers, and sales representatives. Our account executives were reporting they were averaging about $109,000 a year. 
Our freight brokers were reported they was averaging about one hundred fifteen thousand dollars a year, and our sales representatives once at the interview, they was averaging about nine to one thousand eight hundred seventy two dollars. Some were making more, some were, some were making a little bit less, but that's not where it averaged out at. All right, they interviewed 15, okay, account executives. Those are the guys you see up there that goes out and just gets the freight. Okay, they interviewed 21 freight brokers, 21 salaries are reported, and they interviewed six sales representatives. And these are all first year. Employees. Now y'all see why we were so successful. Yeah, now y'all are starting to understand why we were so successful. Because is everyone still there? Make sure everyone's still there. Yes. Yes, right. I'm here. All right. Now y'all are starting to understand and grasp our concept when we say we were very innovative with our structure, okay? With how we structure our, our um, corporate makeup. Now, down here you had what? Certified freight agents, right? And what they were responsible for were carrier acquisitions and low bookings. Now see how that happens? Everything funnels into here, into what? Into our core, which is, was us, and we and we handle all of the logistics and paperwork and all that stuff, and they just funneled everything into us. So you got your carrier acquisitions and your load booking down here by what certified freight agents, and they got what fifty percent of the broker's fee and twenty five cents a percent residuals. Huh. That's good. <laughs> huh? I think that's enough? Yes, it is. <laughs> look, look, them bad boys will get paid, y'all. <laughs> um, look, we was paying them 50% of the broker's fee. So, because remember, we was only giving up what? Seven and a quarter percent of the broker's fee up the top here, right? Right. And that wasn't really from the broker's fee. That was from the what? The low that they was bringing in. So the cents um, per mile, it was getting seven and a quarter percent residual of all the freight that got booked that they brought in by these guys down here. So these guys up here didn't have to book any freight. They didn't have to go out and find no carriers and book any freight. They just hit customer on what? One thing, go out and find loads, get loads, get ship, ship, sign up, ship, sell, 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 sell. So they could, they could focus on just being what? Being good at one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that a lot better than trying to be good at everything? <laughs> Yes. All right. So this is how we set everything up to where we had specific um, um, positions that allow our people just to be good at one thing and got paid handsomely for it. residuals. Okay. Now, come down here, right? If we're getting 30%, right? That means they're getting what? 15%, right? 15%, right? So, 15% minus, that's not even really seven and a quarter percent off of the broker fee. That's really seven and a quarter percent off of the, off, off of the low fence um, per mile, which equated to about really 2% of the broker fee. We was only giving up, what, 17%, right? Right. But so we were still collecting a total of what? Almost what? 14%? Yep. So, depending on how many loads they brought in, how much can serious money? Serious money. And everybody else was making what? Serious money. Because not only did they get that broker's fee, they got 25% residual. Now, how did that 25% residual work? All right. Let's say they went out and they got it. You know, five or six, somebody brought in five or six carriers. Right? They brought in five right. or six carriers. All right. If they book freight for those carriers themselves, they got 50% of the broker's fee. Now, follow me? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, if anybody else, if one of the other brokers or freight agents book or book loads on their carriers, guess what? They got 25%. They got 25%, y'all. Because they're not their carriers. If 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 this guy right, if, if guy number one has five carriers that he's brought in, right? And let's say he may bring in, he may go out and get him a um, because remember, we were saying how people go out and get um the on the carriers that had, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 trucks. All right. So if you went out and got you a carry, your carrier had 25 trucks, right? If you book loads from that carrier, all 25 trucks, which is highly unlikely, you're gonna get 50% of all the loads that you book yourself, right? Right. But if someone else within our network, someone else within our company, one of the other agents put loads on your carriers, you got 25% and they got 25%. Yeah. You how that residual kicks in right there? Because mm -hmm. the carriers you bring in is always gonna be your account. That's always you, that's your carrier group. Always going to be your carrier group. Now, if you're booking loads yourself for your carrier group, you're getting 50% of the loads you book yourself. But if one of the other brokers book loads for your carrier, why? Because your carrier may be the area where what? These people up here have loads at, but you're not really booking freight from those loads right now. Another broker that we have to say, hey, I got some um, loads that's leaving in this area, but he got the carrier up there. So let me go over here to John. And, and book this on one of his carriers. You see what I'm saying? Now, if he booked yeah. a load on one of his own carriers, he can do what? It's percent. But if he's booking a load on somebody else's carrier, guess what? He's okay. getting 25%, they're getting 25%. Wow. Y'all loving that structure? Loving it. <laughs> I came up with that one. Hey, I did that one all by myself. <laughs> like it. That is a cow. <laughs> That is a Calvin Butler's masterpiece right there. <laughs> and surprisingly, not very many, I haven't seen more than two other brokerage firms that have adopted this. But yes, I can lay claim to this one. This was all me. It took me about, oh, three months of planning to come up with this. Just crunching the numbers, make sure it all works, make sure it Make sure it was feasible, you know. But if your brokerage firm is structured in this manner, it makes logistics and handling your people a whole lot easier. Don't, don't you think? Agreed. Because you got Pacific people who are just going to concentrate on being good at Pacific things. If you're good with talking to truck drivers and owner operators, you might want to come down here and be in what? A certified what? I want to be a right? broker. But yeah, you want to be a certified freight agent, right? But if you're good at talking with shippers and you know negotiating with shippers, you want to go up here. You want to get there because you're getting that what? That seven and a quarter percent residuals. <laughs> and all you got, and all you look. If you got yourself, you know, three good shippers. That's probably with 10,000 loads each. And if you're only booking 3% of your loads get booked each year from three of those shippers, that's going to equal out to about eighty to $100,000 per ship per year. Wow. Um, right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So under this structure, if you just get good at just one thing, you can make a ton of money. And that's what got our brokers paid so well, so quickly. Oh, we didn't call it well, our you know, logistics sales executive and our certified um, freight agent. That's how. That's what got them paid so quickly. And this is how we got such great reviews our first year as a broker. This doesn't happen your first year, okay? This right here does not happen your first year. But we made it happen. Because we were, <laughs> hold on, somebody's somebody's watching this on what's called it, and you got your mic open. You, you all need to close your, you need to close that mic. 
Somebody's got your mic open and you're watching us live on Facebook. Please close your mic. Hello? One of you all is watching us on Facebook and you got your mic. I think you closed it. Oh, it, no, no, I'm still hearing it. I'm still hearing it. I don't know. I don't know who it We're is. driving through mountains. I lost connection. Hold on. Finally got a connection after like five minutes, I think. I was wondering where you went. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the feedback from somebody who's got their mic open. Somebody's got their mic open on Facebook. And they're watching us on Facebook at the same time. And they're on and they've signed on with us at the same time. I, I exited so, out the video. But you got to go back and close your mic. Please go back and close your mic. If you was watching us on Facebook, and then you switched over and came in live. Let me mute that. All right, let me mute it. There we go. I got it muted. All right. That happens. I, Y'all know I get a feedback. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. There we go. I, okay. I think I think I got it straight now. Um, yeah, I get a feedback when that happens. And uh, it's not a very good sound. But as you all can see, um, let me see if I can find out what we were oh, yeah. on YouTube. There we go. All right. As you all can see, um yeah like i said this this right here doesn't happen your first year as as a freight broker you don't get reviews like that you don't get you know you know um salary reports like that you don't make that kind of money your first year as a freight broker unless you do what do something that's different from the norm you gotta break you gotta break some eggs to make what an omelet right you gotta shake things up. You gotta do things different. You can't do what everybody you can't do what everyone else is doing. If you want to make some noise, mm -hmm. you gotta you, you gotta do something different. And you gotta step outside the box. You gotta get outside your comfort zone. And you gotta do something completely different. And I'm gonna tell you, when we first started doing this, man, I got people that was sending me comments, and that junk ain't gonna work. What's wrong with you? You can't do that. That's not how it's done. Nobody does it that way. I you doing that? Okay. That's what it works. It worked so well, someone stole our MC number and what's called where they borrowed it and they ran about a hundred and eighty to two hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of loads on you know central dispatch before we even figured out what was going on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And that's the reason why we switched over from a broker firm over to a dispatch firm. Because we wanted to lessen our liability, and my board was like, "Hey, they got kind of nervous about that liability that people stealing our our because." And I don't agree with the Federal Motor Carrier Association by making your MC numbers and all your stuff public um, information. That's kind of crazy. That's like posting your social security numbers and stuff up, right? Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's like posting on um, post my date of birth, social security number, all on Facebook. <laughs> No, nobody's so gonna steal it. Up there too. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna steal it. <laughs> you know, and your credit score. <laughs> uh, Seven thirty-five. You, you post it all up there. <laughs> Might as well post your bank account on it too, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, look, but that part I don't agree with the Federal Motor Carrier Association um, um, and DOT. I think, uh, me personally, I think DOT numbers and MT numbers should be um, private, you know, just like, you know, uh, credit reports. You know what I mean? You got to have some type of access code to access that stuff. And I think those things should be. Um, I think those things should be private. That part I do not agree with. So that's why operating as a dispatch firm is less liability and it's a lot safer. Um, believe it or not, um, because anybody can steal somebody's, you know, EOT or MT number. 
pretty much do whatever they wanted to, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this is David Merritt. Yeah. Just want to make just want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. There's actually a difference between a freight agent and a dispatcher. They are oh, not yeah. one and the same. Yes. 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 Freight agents work for freight brokers. Freight broker agent, quote unquote, freight agent. They work for freight brokers. Okay. Got gotcha. you. A dispatcher pretty much is an independent dispatcher. Or you're a dispatch agent, you work for what? A dispatch firm. Okay. Um, so okay. a freight broker agent or a freight agent, as some people just like to call them, like they work for a broker. And a lot of freight agents will have a bond and stuff, but they don't have any seasoning on their bond. So they go work for a freight broker that has all the seasoning and all the money in place and that type of stuff. Okay. Well, all right. So that's how that works. And in other. That's what I understood. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You're coming in like real slow. Thank it's drawn out. Say that again now. Hold on, y'all. My internet is icing crazy. I said, I, I thought that's what I had understood that it was a difference. Yeah, 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 there is a difference, okay? Um, um, but on the other companies, the way they, the way their structure was set up, as a freight broker agent, you don't make very much money with a broker firm, right? They don't make the kind of money that our people were making because of the way they're structured, because you're trying to do the whole thing, and they're only paying you a percentage of what? Just whatever load you book out. They're not paying you residuals on your accounts or anything like that, right? Correct. So whatever you've done, you got to redo it every single day just to make money. On the hour structure, once you set something up in place, you can just sit back and wait for the money to come in on it. Especially if you're doing this part up here. If you're that sales executive, once you close that deal, right, your only job is to make sure that shipper stays happy. You may go down here and check with these guys every now and then to see how many of their loads are being booked and if there are any other loads that these guys ran, you know, if they had any problems with deliveries or if they were late, you want to make sure, that, you know, that's your account. That's your account. Your job is to keep that, keep your account holders, your shippers, your clientele happy, right? If that means, you know, if there was a problem with one of the uh, carriers down here uh, washed up a load or had a wreck and and messed up the load, or they were late, and the load got damaged when it was in there. If you gotta take a flight over to that shipper and take them out to dinner and to the next game or whatever it is to get them back happy, to make sure that they're okay and good and happy, then that's what you gotta do. Why? Because you're making buku money. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Correct. That's okay. Public relations. <laughs> exactly. Look. When we was running a brokerage firm, we ran it like a corporate. We ran it like a real high dollar corporation. Firm, but this was big money. Okay. We did, we, did, we did not run it like, you know, hey, I'm just in the trucking industry. We're going to book some freight. No. This corporate structure came from my years as a mortgage broker and working in a, you know, the big brokerage firm. It was somewhat similar um, to this when you got realtors and brokers and everybody all working on one firm. And everybody is responsible for a little piece of the puzzle, but you get paid good money for your accounts. This is where this came from. Okay. Because remember, I told you all um, before I got into trucking, I was heavily into what business. Okay. I'm an entrepreneur, I was heavily into business. So, so I know how to run and set up and structure businesses where profitability is at its highest, but where the payouts 
for the individuals who are working within that corporate structure can get paid a lot of money for doing very specific little things. Okay? So if you are a brokerage firm within our platform, you all may want to go back and look at this. You want to go back, you want to look at this video. You also want to go back and you want to look at our very um our early on um videos. Okay. Um, you want to take a look at our our early on videos. Um, we've got some, there's some other stuff in here too that you all will find very interesting in those videos. Our, um, the early on videos that we have here, uh, you want to look at, uh, let's see here. You definitely want to look at this stuff right here. Uh, career opportunity uh, conference call. You want to look at that one. You also want to look at um, the earn while you learn that one. You, you, you want to look at all these right here. These, these one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to check those out. Okay. You want to check those out. And then there's another one down here. You want to check out two of oh, really, really good ones. I think it's this one. But you want to check these, but you want to check out these videos from two years ago, um, almost two and a half years ago. Those are the ones you want to check out. Because they concentrate, they're on brokerage. Because that's when we were brokers. And if you look at those, don't look at them for you know how we pay, you know, look at them for how to set up your how to set up your company and how to run your company. Because we don't operate this way anymore because we're not brokers anymore. But this is great material for those of you who are brokers and you're trying to set up your brokers firm. You may want to look at how we were set up and you may want to adopt what we're doing. Make sense to everybody? Yes. All righty now. All righty. Next question. Next question. Do you know the DCA logo? Okay, I'll go ahead again. Ladies first. Do you have to use the DCA low board or no? No, I don't use that. I don't see a need for it. I mean, it's too much money. I mean, 200 and some odd okay, dollars for okay. the, I can get the same thing on direct freight. Now, <laughs> nah, if you all want to use that, step out. we do have members with our platform who do have that. So you might want to reach out to them on the chat group. And say, hey, who has a that whole board are you willing to work with me on? That's the whole great thing about networking. Okay. Okay, cool. Next question. Well, we got a question. I don't here. Read. Somebody else will go. <laughs> okay. Well, hold up. We got a we got a we got a question here. Oh, somebody just said great comment. Okay, great. Great info. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, who is this? Tyrone Barnes on our YouTube channel. On last week's video, on last night's video, um, says great info. Um, great, we appreciate that. Matter of fact, let me give him a quick thumbs up. Love that. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. Next question. It's Q and A Wednesday. Q and A Wednesday. Okay, so. As for my husband, who's just starting out and about to be an owner, become an owner operator, um, he, would your platform be helpful to him? Yes, our platform is helpful to anybody who's in the trucking industry. I mean, if he's about to become an owner operator, right? Mm -hmm. What better place for him to hang out is amongst a bunch of independent owner op business managers who got access to trucks and direct freight brokers who got access to loads and people that want to find loads for him. Cool, cool, cool. And not only that, he can <laughs> learn a lot, right? Just by he. I mean, think about it. If an owner operator was watching us and watching us, you know, and we're showing them how to do what, how to find short run loads and connect them and make what dedicated. You don't think that's something that an owner operator would <laughs> either would be appreciative of or can learn from or can benefit from? Right, right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> 
everything we do is is to the benefit of owner operators, the people who need to run freight. Because why? That's where you all make your money at, as brokers and as what? On our business manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. So that's a great thing about our platform. Um, it's 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 right for whoever wants to. You know, if you're in the business, this is a platform for you. You know, on top of that, you get access to a, a more than a hundred load booths. You know, you get access to you know all this stuff that just this library, a network you can mm -hmm. plug into. So yeah, this is the you know, on our operators, um, you know, company drivers who are who are thinking about becoming on operators, those drivers who have been on the road and are thinking about coming off the road, uh, family members of of truck drivers, you know, uh, husbands, if you got a wife who's a truck driver and you're thinking about getting in the industry but you don't want to drive trucks, this is the perfect place for you to be. You know, wives, the same thing, children, right? Of truck drivers. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, expand your business, you know, add different things to what you're doing. If you are a truck driver, and on an operator and a dispatch division or a brokerage um, division onto your cup. You know, get get people, uh, your relatives and your your nieces and your nephews, your friends, get them to all come on and you all work together and form and form your company. Get a corporate account um, with us. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Next question. It's Q and A Wednesday. All questions and answers. Q and A Wednesday. Yes. I got a real quick question, Calvin. Calvin. All right. Uh, one at a time. One at a time. Who's first? Go ahead. Right, he can, he, well, y'all. So, y'all. So he curious. said he Y'all <laughs> <laughs> so uh, curious. Miss right, Damien, um, real quick question. Um, getting your own authority and um, you don't want to use a carrier, can you get an insurance on your own knowing you yeah. don't have an MC? Uh, well, you're going to need an MC number uh, okay. if you want to get your own authority because you're going to need that. Um, um, you can go to one hour authority. That's, that's who you, that's, that's, that is a million and one places online you can go to get your authority. Okay. Mm -hmm. You recommend one hour authority. Okay. Okay. Um, one hour. And 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 then we, we would have to get a um get insurance, right? Yeah, but one hour authority can help you. Can help you get all that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's that's why we recommend it because 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 they can help you take care of everything you um to take everything you need under one roof. Got you. Okay. Your permits, your insurance, your authority, your you know all that stuff. See here, um, insurance, surety bonds. You know, uh, help you with compliance. Uh, all your permits, um, all your different authorities, all right here. Okay, got you. What our authority? Not coming. All right. Next question. Whoever the other gentleman was. Calvin, I was going to ask about the account key that you're supposed to receive and the time frame on that. All right. Once we sign up, that would be Mr. Khalid Hodge. If you need to contact on that. Are you talking about the okay. straight? You're talking about what? The straight dispatch, right? Correct. Yeah. Go to Facebook. Go to the chat. Are you part of the chat group already? Uh, I can't right now. I'm driving. Okay. All right. For those of you who but, want to uh, contact, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But those of you who want to contact Mr. Khalid Hodge, okay, he is the um, um, the developer of Straight Dispatch, that uh, license key software that we use to find um, the money paying loads up front fast. You know, he highlights those loads, what we're looking for, so we find those loads really quick. You can find him. 
the quickest way and the best way to contact him, the easiest way to contact him, is to go to your Facebook Messenger, um, go on our, our private um, um, chat. You're going to have to be a subscription paying member to get onto that chat group, everybody. So don't everybody start flooding my inbox by adding to the chat group if you're not a subscription paying member. So if you haven't joined our, if you haven't joined our platform as a, as a subscription paying member, you're not going to be able to get onto our private chat. But the quickest way to contact them is to go to your messenger. I'm going to show you all here. Give you all a quick little thing here. Go to your messenger, get into the, you know, and he is in both chat groups. We have him in both chat groups. In case anybody wants to contact them, we have two chat groups on Facebook. We have one within your back office. But the quickest and easiest way to get in contact with you is to go to your back office, um, um, your um, Facebook chat group. Here's one right here. We're going to go to this Facebook chat group. We're going to pull it up here in a second. This is the RBBS um, LLC um, chat group number two. All right. So in chat group number two, as y'all can see here, people are always chatting this group. Y'all always talk. I love the way y'all share stuff and just talk to each other and help each other out. But you go in there, you're going to click at, and you're going to start typing his name, K-H-A, and it should pull him right up. There he is right there, Ali Hodge. And all you got to do is type something to him. Ali, we are talking about you. <laughs> In class tonight. Then we'll put it's all good stuff. <laughs> and watch how quickly he responds. Why? Because if he's like me, y'all see how I just heard that beat? That means what? Someone just said something in the chat group because he is just like me and he keeps his um he keeps his phone on out on messenger. And it alerts him when someone you know types in something and it pulls up. Oh, they're talking about me. <laughs> now, see how that works? Now, so if you can do that, he'll get back with you as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, why? Because he gets to see it, whether he's at work or whatever case may be, he's responding on his phone, and then he can get back in. Here's someone who is Diamond, who's also on with us tonight. Hey, Diamond, I see you in the chat group, too. <laughs> so, uh, so you see how that works? Um, that's how our chat group works, okay? It's all in, look, there's Khalid right there. As you all can see, <laughs> he's typing right now. Does everybody see how quickly he responds? Yes. And there thank he is you. right there. That is the quickest and easiest way to contact anybody within our, our platform. Okay? Um, especially if you're trying to get in touch with him because he's so busy. Uh, trust me, he gets, he's getting phone calls. Let's see, he says right now, I'm stuck on the phone. I was just saying he's so busy. <laughs> I mean, you, can't, you can't beat this live stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, you can't beat this. Look, Khalid has become so busy. <laughs> uh, he said, see right here, I try to stay available in chat if I could. So he's always monitoring the chat. He's always monitoring. So that is the best way to get in um, contact with him. Um, understood. You do great work. All right. Um, but as you all can see, that is the quickest and easiest way uh, to get in contact with them. Um, I mean, I love, look, I love this chat group. You know, um, when, when people ask us what's the most valuable part, what makes our platform, what sets our platform aside, this is really the most valuable part of our platform, believe it or not. Because this right here, you all teach each other, okay? Because I'm only one person. 
Mr. Hodge is only one person. There's no way that we could handle all of you all. People ask me all the time, how do you manage such a large network? The answer is, I don't. You all manage this network by this chat group and your networking and you all helping each other out. You all actually learn more from each other than you all ever learn from me. You really do. Because look at this stuff that you all are sharing all the time with you. You all are always in here sharing. Someone would ask a question and one of you all will jump right in and answer it. Sometimes I come to this chat group at three o'clock in the morning. There's somebody in this chat group chatting with each other. You can't buy that. I mean, literally, you, I mean, you can't buy that type of support. And you know what I'm saying? I'm now, on top of all the other stuff that we provide for, for, uh, for you all, the access to 100 load boards, access to 19 million plus shippers, access to every owner operator registered in every state, access to all your documents, contracts, your agreement form, access Woo. all your training videos, access to, you know, me and everything else. But this right here, this right here was the best part of what we implemented. But this is what brings it all together. Having you all be able to network with each other and to help each other out. This is one thing you won't find on any other platform. Well, they don't want you all causing the cause in most other platforms, they don't want you talking to each other. I mean, they really don't. <laughs> they hardly want to talk. To, they hardly want you to talk to them, <laughs> let alone to each other. <laughs> but, you know, we encourage you. Okay? Because we want you all to learn from each other. Okay? We want you all to learn. Because, let's face it, everybody is not successful, right? But the people that are successful, you all can learn from them. And if you can adopt the things that successful people do, then you too can be what? Successful. And you can't get that by shutting you all off from each other. So this is why we, you know, have this chat group because all of you all are here to do what? To learn this industry. And every little thing you learn, you're going to help someone else to learn it too. Okay? Some of y'all having some great days, best day ever. I like that. All right. So, but that's how you contact Mr. Colleen Hodge, and that's the quickest way to contact them. And he'll always kind of respond back, you know, and that's the quickest way to get in touch with. Him. All right. Next question. Oh, can I answer that to um, your satisfaction? By the way. Yes, sir. You certainly did. Thank you very much. Great, great, great. Appreciate it. Appreciate the input. Appreciate the input. Next question. We got about we got time for about oh, what time is it here? It is 936. We're gonna give time for about maybe two more, two more questions. And then we're gonna wrap it up. Okay, it's been a great session so far. Who wants to have the last two questions? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> I love that movie. Fans really be watching, watching that other night. That guy, he's a congressman now. The teacher, Bueller, Bueller. You know, he, he's he's nice. An and and in the movies, he was what a social studies teacher too, right? <laughs> now, that's ironic. No one wants to have those last two questions. They're going to do it for the night, everybody? Did everybody enjoy tonight's session? Yes. Got a lot of yes. information. Thank you. Great. Yes, sir. Great. Very powerful. Thank you. Great. We appreciate it so much. I appreciate you all. You all don't know how much we appreciate you all and the participation that you all bring to the table. Um, that really um, means, a lot to, means a lot to me. It means a lot to our organization. And you all really make this what it is. I mean, you really do. And um, you know, a lot of people call me up and say, hey, man, you put something great. This is it. But I can't take credit for the whole thing. I have to give a lot of credit to you all because you all have great, great, great participation. You all tune in to the trainings. You go and you watch the videos. You all give us feedback. You all are on the chat groups. You're helping each other out. I mean, I mean, 
it doesn't get any better than that. And we really appreciate it. We really appreciate you all taking to this platform. We appreciate all the great feedback that we get uh, from you all. We appreciate you all sharing this platform and sharing our information and you know all the good things that you all say about us out there. Because I know you all that sometimes you all have to defend us. <laughs> There's some people out there that don't like us, <laughs> and I know you know you. And some of the groups they talk about, you know, <laughs> you know they they go off on us, but it's all good because we know you know better you know a lot of times people will say stuff like that because they don't understand what this platform is you know, they, 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 you know, they're, you know, they're on the outside looking in and they really can't grasp you know belonging to something or being in an industry but not feeling that but not i'm um, feeling like you're in it by yourself that's the worst feeling you know to go pay for these you know the expensive training platform and then be and then just be left out there like you just all alone you know you have nobody you can go and talk to you have no feedback you have no support you have no network you know and you know i mean you got the rules the regulations the term the terminology and you know how to quote name race but who do you call when you have a problem when do you go when you have a problem you know um just the contacts that we have every single week, every Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, every Saturday. You know, I mean, what other platform does that? Gives you that much contact, personal contact, you know? Um, so, and in all the contact that you all share with, um, with each other. Um, I appreciate it. Mr. Khalil Haj, he appreciates it. He appreciate every last one of you all who have, who have signed up for well, his, um, um, his straight dispatch, and I said it at the beginning of the year, that young man is going to be a millionaire before the year is out. Um, and 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 I'm pretty sure he's getting close to just about quitting his his Because, you know, that you know, young man had three jobs. <laughs> three jobs. And when he created this, you know, that software, you know, he joined our platform, and he said he wanted to, um, you know, learn this and do something. That was going to help him to be able to walk away from his three jobs. He is well on his way. A lot of you are well on your way. Um, a lot of you have done great things. Um, um, I'm going to give a shout out to um, Viacom. Um, in case y'all don't know who that is, Viacom was a, um, they started with us back in, I think it was what, March of 2018. And now they're one of the largest um, firms out there in the country right now, um, doing great work, great work. Um, uh, we'll give a shout out to them. There's a lot of other companies um, that I want to give a shout out to, but so many of them right now, I just can't name off the top of my head. Um, uh, Mr. Elijah Wash, his firm, doing great. They started his own um, 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 logistics uh, call center. Uh, he started with them, doing great. Um, Charles Mundy, his firm is out there doing great. Uh, you know. So many of you all out there who are doing great things. So um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing forward. And uh, I'll see y'all here on Saturday. Saturday, Six Figures Booking Freight from Home Show from 1015 to 115. Um, let's get together and let y'all pick my brain. For those of you who are tuning in to us live on Facebook in our different locations, if you want to join our platform, um, the National Dispatchers Network and the RBS Logistics Learning Center, you can do so by going to mydispatcher.org. Um, go to mydispatcher.org. When you get there on the home page, you're going to scroll down um, until you see the video. Underneath the video, you're going to see where it says to enroll. Click here. You click that, and that will take you over to our automated enrollment. Um, I'll show you here. That will take you, excuse me, over to the automated enrollment, and you can enroll with any debit or credit card. Um, the individual enrollment plan is $349.95 plus tax, and after that is $39.95 plus tax per month for you to access your back office tools and resources. We also have corporate enrollments, and we have a veteran discount plan. So, um, hey, if you, this is something, something that you've been thinking about and you're looking for a platform that really works and provides you with all the things that you're going to need, look us up. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate all of you all. I hope y'all have a great Thursday and Friday. 
I um, usually do not take um, 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 consultation calls on Thursdays and Fridays. Those are my two days to kind of, you know, take care of all my other stuff, you know, do my advertising, put together the stuff I need to put together, update the websites and things like that, get all the, you know, all the videos onto the back office site and things that get prepared for our Saturday show. So um, if you if you just have a question that you want to, you know, call me up and ask me about, you know, that's okay. But uh, let's try not to do a whole lot of consultation stuff on Thursday and Fridays. Those are my days to kind of um, work on the business and making this thing a lot better um, for, for all of you all. With that, hope y'all had a great night. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all learned something. I want to say good. Thank you all. I'm gonna okay. say good. Good night, everybody. Y'all have you, a Gavin. no. Thank you all. I good appreciate night. it so much. I'm gonna go eat this country pride. <laughs> all right, y'all have a great night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, now.